Big supporters of each other. Thank you, Steffi. I'm looking forward to this. So I think um, what we're talking about, before I introduce Michael, um, we're talking about the Internet of Things here. And for those of you who were uh, at uh, Henry Blodgett's opening uh, slide-a-thon yesterday, um, you might have noticed that he said, in passing, because he said everything in passing, he was talking so quickly, it was a great presentation, but he said, you know, the next phase is the Internet of Things, and he had a slide with the numbers going, <laughs> and he just, the next phase of all this stuff is increasingly viewed to be the Internet of Things. The implications are spectacular, spectacularly diverse. At CES, there were 900 exhibitors showing uh, things related to the Internet of Things. I think you'll see in our conversation, there are a lot of ramifications. Uh, I want to hear from you during this discussion, but before we get started, we're going to look at a video. There is a force so powerful that it can transform industries, disrupt the status quo, bring people together across time and space, and redefine human experience. That force is innovation. And in today's connected world, innovation is everything. We believe innovation is the engine of differentiation and the driver of success. And that value is created in the intelligence of things. We believe in the power of connected intelligence to build a brighter tomorrow. That's why we help the world's biggest brands and smallest startups across every industry bring intelligent things to life. So free your imagination, adopt the Maverick paradigm, and together, we'll change the world. Flextronics, tomorrow starts today. Okay, Michael, get up here. You can tell from looking at that video that before he went to HP, Michael was the CMO of Disney because the production values <laughs> are so high in there. Um, story, story. Story. story, well, <laughs> yeah, he, Disney, HP, this guy's done a lot of great stuff, but you know, he is, the thing I find interesting about that video is that it makes the statement that the reason why the next phase of business is all about innovation is the Internet of Things, which is a pretty strong statement. Not that I reject it, but why is that the case? Well, well first what I want to say is the, the Internet of Things, let's start with the Internet piece of the Internet of Things. Um, I don't think that industry term that's been adopted is very helpful for what we're really talking about. Uh, the internet is really just about connecting people and things. It's a mechanism. What truly is going to revolutionize business and switch the paradigm and redefine industries and create new ones is this idea of smart connected devices. This little thing is going to change your world. Can we get a video on that thing? Can we get a zoom in on that? I don't know, we talked this about This little it. thing will have the capabilities, most of the capabilities oh, thank you. of what your smart supercomputer that you're holding in your hands does. That's a circuit, right? Yeah. It's a circuit and sensors. With sensors. It has antennas. That's it the has... one that's on the baby in the video? Yes. Yeah. And, and what this will do is connect your world. And as we think about connected living, smart connected living, that's what we talk about when we say the intelligence. And, and when you think about what's driving that, David, it's this idea of the processing power that exists today with the miniaturization of devices and things. And those two things combined with costs that have come down are allowing this to be pervasive in almost everything. You mean we're going to all have this stuck on ourselves? Yeah. Um, a ta it's a, that's a tattoo, you can put that It's going to be a tattoo? Yeah. Uh -huh. are you, so Flextronics is going to get in the tattoo business? Oh, absolutely. All right. Uh, We're going to decorate you. You know, you're so <laughs> ambitious, Michael. You're not just trying to rebrand a company that has not had its fair share. You're actually yeah. trying to rebrand the next phase of business, right? So you're saying it's the intelligence of things. Yes. I mean, I don't know if I buy that, but I think it's interesting. And I mean, the, some terms need to be redefined because, you know, they're not sufficiently broad. I don't know if this is the case, but... Um, 
What, I think, you know, since Flextronics is not very well understood, you should probably briefly tell a little bit sure. about what your company does and how big it is, because yeah. I don't think most people realize that, for example, this Fitbit, and normally I had a different color one, but I, it broke and I had to use this one, which is not really my preferred color. This Fitbit is made by Flextronics, which makes almost all of Fitbit's products, along with almost every other personal device you're wearing today. So explain that. Yeah, so, so most people thought of our company really as just a manufacturer, and that was back you know, 10 years ago when it was really about EMS and contract manufacturing. And the company does much more than that. We have over 35 design centers um, around the world. We have over 3,000 design and engineers that co-innovate and co-develop and then take it all the way through to the commercialization of the actual product itself. So we really say we go from sketch to scale. So we literally have had people, um, major companies, Fortune 50 companies come to us and they literally had uh, a discussion with a bunch of engineers over lunch and they, had, they drew a sketch on a napkin and they brought the napkin to us and said basically, can you do this? Can we make this? Um, and we go to work with them, co-designing and co-engineering the product, um, and we go from sketch to scale globally. So we're, you know, in 30 countries around the world with over 100 locations where we still do the manufacturing, but we really do a lot of the innovation that leads into the manufacturing. And how many people? Uh, we have over 200,000 employees in the company. 200,000 employees, yes. and the revenues are what, like 28 billion? Yeah, approaching 30 billion. Almost 30 billion in revenues, and it's also the second largest manufacturer in the world of any type after Foxconn. Yeah, I mean, is that if, you, if, you, if you think of the only Foxconn is bigger than these guys. Yeah. So when you think of um, sort of the manufacturing, um, I like to say we're really a market of one because most of those competitors that are just doing manufacturing aren't doing the design and innovation. And many more of the customers that come to us are really looking for the expertise in design and engineering. And, 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 and so what we try to do is focus on at Flextronics those core underlying technologies that cut across sort of all industry, whether you're in automotive, healthcare, uh, consumer businesses. And these are the things that are the sensors, the actuators, um, battery, energy, human machine interface. It's all these things that build the component of a smart device. I did want to come back though to the intelligence of things because I, I, I'm hopefully I'm going to convince you that that's the right moniker because um, again, you know, the internet is about connectivity. And when you think about products, so, so, so information technology is changing fundamentally products. How is it changing it? Before, products were just mechanical, they were electrical. Now, they're a complex system, microprocessors, sensors, data collection, uh, transmission. They're doing all kind of things that you want, once couldn't do. And so those complex systems have an intelligence to them. And so for me, when you think about the emphasis of where the industry should be placing um, uh, their, their emphasis, really. It's on the intelligence, the smartness, the connectedness of these things, um, not just the mechanics of how it's done, but what it can do. And, and that's what will change every industry. And there, I'll tell you, there's a lot of companies that, talk, uh, that, 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 that don't think they're going to be touched by this. Uh, one would argue if you're in the services business and you're in the in, an insurance company, you're not going to be touched by what we call the intelligence of things. You absolutely will. Um, and, and I think it's going to redefine industry boundaries. We're going to see uh, some companies challenged. They're going to be challenged by adjacencies that they've never seen coming. Uh, there's this, this whole industry that's developed around the Internet of Things called near medical. Okay, well, near medical. Near medical. So now we have these companies that are, whether they're performing services or they have products, they're going to be, the, the near medical is now moving into the medical. And, these, and, and, and that may come from somebody like a Nike. All of a sudden, Nike that was in wellness is now maybe in near medical. Well, where does that go? And if you're a medical company, are you paying attention to that? And I think, you know, CEOs and boards today need to understand that this, this disruption that's happening in information technology today is going to redefine their business. Um, and it's going to redefine their competitive set very quickly. So um, I, I do think the emphasis does need to be on smart connected and intelligence more than anything. One of the things that I find interesting is we've heard a lot of talk about cloud, and everybody knows the smartphone is the device that's transforming the world. But in a way, what's happened in recent years is the components have come into place to finally make the, the long-discussed Internet of Things become a possibility. I mean, RFID was a huge 
buzzy thing in 1999 and never really fulfilled its promise at all. Right. But now you have this centralized processing or just, you know, That's dispersed right. remote processing at scale all over the planet. And we've got these controllers that literally everyone is going to be carrying. And so we have the control tools and we have the storage and analytics capability so that when this intelligence is distributed to the edge, we can really instrument society and our lives in a way that has never been done before. Uh, that, that's exactly right. And I think what you're also going to see more than we have seen is this idea of open innovation where industries have to partner with each other. I mean, we're seeing uh, a lot of the true, very fast innovation in this space come out of the consumer sector. And, and make no mistake, the, the automotive sector is now adopting some of those technologies. So, for instance, these sensors that you're seeing on your wrists uh, and Flextronics makes about 85% of all wearable sort of uh, devices. 85% of all wearables, wearables you make? Yeah. And, and I don't, how many people here would have ever guessed that? Like zero, right? Okay, one person who works for Flextronics, probably. Uh, <laughs> anyway, go, go on. Okay. Well, maybe he's a customer, I yeah. don't know. Anyway, go on, sorry. So, so, so um, you know, a, again, I just think you're going to see this uh, open innovation really start to take place uh, where you see the automobile industry adopting some of the technologies that were developed in the consumer sector relative to sensors. And whether those sensors now get embedded into seat belts not just around the car, but into seat belts that actually monitor your biometrics and eventually will be able to understand whether uh, you've fallen asleep at the wheel of the car and the car actually adjusts itself accordingly. I mean, these, these are the kind of things real, that people are working on today uh, relative to smart connected devices, but you're going to see these adjacencies and cooperation that you haven't seen, and it's going to be co-innovation because of the pace at which it's moving. Um, and to remain competitive, you're going to see a lot more of that. And that's something that, that um, we encourage and, yeah. and really believe in. So th that's one of the pieces. So as, as you rightfully said, mobility, always on, always connected, right? The idea of the, the processing power that exists in the cloud. A lot of these, these technologies in IT now have converged at a moment in time that now allow for a lot of smart connected devices. Yeah. Um, and, and I think you'll see it across every industry. I don't think there'll be an industry that's not touched by Well, your by point it. about adjacencies is actually illustrated by one of the great German companies, Bosch. And I happen to have had a senior Bosch executive on a panel I did on this same topic at CES. And you know, Bosch, two of their biggest businesses are automotive parts and home appliances. Mm -hmm. And they've taken the knowledge they gained from automotive, where sensors have been a big part for a long time, and now they've made a commitment. They're not going to design and build any new consumer products for the home that aren't connected. So they're, they're new, new, any new toaster, fridge, That's freezer, right. you know, they're, and they're taking technology out of the car that was like a tailpipe emissions monitor and putting it in the stove so they could tell you when your turkey's ready, yeah. which is interesting. Um, and, and I, I really learned a lot well, of impressive stuff about Bosch. They should be a sponsor next year, Paul. Yeah, get them. Yeah. They're really interesting. Uh, and anyway, so, but, but does, is everything that Flextronic's making going to be connected? Is that sort of well, something I think that's, that's happening? That, that's just, listen, so, so it's, it's interesting you say that. Uh, we, we just completed uh, a, a survey of over 380 of our customers. And we work with, you know, the top, 20 medical companies in the world. We work with the top 10 automotive companies. You know, we're working with a, a lot of the leaders in this field. So we did this survey on intelligence. And we said, you know, how important is this to you relative to other technological innovations? And 88% of them said, highly important and one of the most important uh, innovations to happen and something we need to focus on. Of that, though, only 22% believe their companies are investing enough behind IoT. Yeah. And so there is the, there, and yet the speed at which this is moving. So there, there is a, a bit of knowledge that's missing. Yeah. But what, to your point and to your question, most of the customers that we deal with, not all, are saying, help us with this. Yeah. Uh, this is important. Uh, just as you said, this sort of cross-fertilization of innovation in this what we call open market of innovation. You know, you're seeing, hey, can we take something that was learned and apply it and help apply it to, to this, this technology? I think it's about thinking differently too, though. You, you brought up um, CES and how many people were exhibiting at the Consumer Electronics Show. For the first time now, I want you to think about this. You have the Consumer Electronics Show and you have 
the, the automobile show in Detroit, which is a week later. Yet, the, the biggest display ever at the Consumer Electronics Show was from automotive companies, and it was all about smart connected technologies. And they launched a lot of cars there. And, yeah. and, and you heard the CEO of Ford basically say, I'm not here to market and just sell cars. Ford's about mobility. Okay, well, this is a CEO that's thinking right. And now he's thinking of the adjacencies and what that car is going to do in the future. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Ford is getting into apps for parking, apps for conge tra yep. traffic congestion management, apps for, you know, all kinds of maintenance and things that, that are a function of the connectedness. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I want to make sure before we run yep. out of time that if anybody has a comment or a question in the audience, they have a chance to, to raise it. So raise the hand and the question and comment. Okay, here. Sure. Linda. Fascinating presentation. Um, so my question relates to the data. I think yeah. that there, <clears throat> there's, you know, putting aside the, the giant Pandora's box of privacy, to me what's really exciting when you see sensors on babies and you see, you know, heart rates being collected, um, when you begin to cross that across people, I mean, that's where the science really begins to kick in. And so I'm wondering, yeah. you know, is that something you're sort of leaving to the various industries or are you no, thinking it, about where that goes? No, it's interesting. No, no, that, that's a great question. And, and we have a great, uh, there's a great example of that in the healthcare and, and, and a company that we, we partnered with. Um, if you think about, and I'll just take the U.S., that one in every healthcare, do one out of every nine healthcare dollars is spent in, in diabetes. And... Right. Um, one in uh, every seven people die uh, in the U.S. from diabetes relative to deaths and mortality. And so when you think about that, and there's a cost to that, um, when you think about the maintenance of that or maintaining your own health, the idea that you would have sensors that actually uh, aren't invasive that can help you manage that um, and technologies that you wear um, to manage your, your blood glucose. Um, that's being developed and that will become a reality. When you, when you s see those type of things, uh, you begin to realize that this type of technology could reduce uh, the cost of managing chronic diseases by 10 to 20 percent. That is an enormous savings throughout the whole sort of medical infrastructure. So, so it's not just uh, about your, your, you know, maybe, and we will see the coffee pot that's connected, but it is also about building in efficiencies reducing costs, making people safer. Uh, think about autonomous cars, you think about where the sensors go relative to autonomous driving vehicles, and you're going to find again but the idea of the smart connected devices and what it will do to casualties on the road, what it will do to accidents and the reduction of that cost. Now to your data point. Quick, because we got another question okay. and I want to make one more point too, go ahead. The, the, the data piece to this, we, it will have to change, it will have to be addressed. One prime example is this near medical group, um, just in the U.S. alone. You know, there, there, there are devices which are collecting data on you medically. Um, where, does that, where is that data? Is that data protected by HIPAA or isn't it? Uh, how does that get uh, regulated or not? There's a lot of questions that are going to have to be addressed fairly quickly in the near term around data, data privacy, what kind of data, where it sits, uh, that aren't covered today by any kind of regulation. So I think you're going to see that, I, and, and I, I do know the industries are, are very cognizant of it um, and, and need to address it. But, so. but we got one, we're really out of time, but one of the things that I think is a point we've got to make before we wrap, you know, it's very easy to conceptualize the implications of medical monitoring and quantified self and all that stuff. What's really hard is imagining the consequences of a truly instrumented society. And I think that's why these conversations often don't go as deeply as they, they need to and why the CEOs of the companies that you surveyed aren't doing enough. They don't know what to do yeah. because we are really entering into a new landscape and none of us really know what it's going to be like. The privacy thing is going to be huge. The management is going to be huge. It's going to increase efficiencies all over the place, and it's going to scare the shit out of all of us too. Yeah. But this guy. Well, had one, and, and, can we I quickly just... get your comment or question, and then we got to run. We got to. Okay. We got to get off. We're off. Quick. They're getting the hook. No, no, over here. Sorry. Back there. <laughs> the, hook. the hook's coming. The hook's coming. 
Uh, Steve Bell from Heavy Reading. Um, yeah. there, there was a clear statement made at um, Mobile World Congress last year that IoT is actually all about services and converting everybody into service companies. And it's interesting you've made this comment about sort of uh, sketch to delivery. Really, that's almost Flextronics becoming a service company. Isn't we, we're, well, we, we, Flextronics sees ourselves, we do. We offer services that are solution sets end to end. Uh, so not only are we a manufacturer, but we, we, we do offer solutions, so yes. And he had this whole pile of really cool yeah. things to show, which we didn't get time we for. We didn't even that, get to, to, that to are talk like to you about. Little tiny things that can do what you know, your computer well, can do. Uh, what you can do through printing technologies now that you couldn't, flexible technologies that will be embedded in almost everything. Um, and we do have that, and apologize that we didn't have time to show it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you all.